All right, well, welcome to the Evolution Working Group for this April 5th, whatever year it is, 2097, something like that. Um, welcome to our newcomers. Uh, we're hanging out. Um, Vincent, nice to meet you. Maybe if uh, you want to take a minute to introduce yourself. In yes, so I am Vincent and I'm from India and I'm an undergraduate in computer science uh, in my pre-final year. Oh, yes, awesome. So I'm a new BA. Yeah. Well, nice to meet you. Welcome. Yeah, yeah. Thank Welcome. you, Sean. Yeah. Nice to meet you, too. And uh, Sakshi or Ayush, I don't know if either of you want to introduce yourselves or if you might just be hanging out from the last meeting, not even realizing you're still on Zoom. Yeah, actually, I've been, you know, uh, here for the uh, like for past half an hour. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So myself, Ayush Kaushik. Uh, I'm from National Institute of Technology, Hamirpur, India. And okay. uh, working on the project of open source health metrics visualization exploration. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And um, Mabel, I think you are new as well. This is the Evolution Working Group meeting, if that's what you're looking for. Yes, hello, I'm working. Um, I'm intending to apply to the um, conversion rate, um, Google Summer of Code. Oh, idea. awesome. Yeah. Awesome, well, welcome. Great. Welcome the conversion rate, well, there's also a meeting, um, this, this may be good to get introduced to some of the metrics and models behind it. Um, the conversion rate metric, we have a metrics model meeting a week from today at 6 p.m. Central U.S. time, Central Daylight time, like Chicago time. And this tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Central Daylight time, Chicago time, we have an Asia Pacific meeting. And that particular metric model is likely to be discussed at either of those meetings. If they work for your schedule, you could probably pick up some insights there as well. Yeah, I actually went to the model, the the metrics models working group meeting like last week. Oh, okay, and the cool. evolution working group the week before. But yeah, I, didn't, I was just trying to see what was going on, so I didn't say anything. But yeah, no, that's great. I'm usually usually Matt and I are at that working group meeting, but we were both we were in Spain meeting with the Baturgia Grimoire Lab folks, and so we missed. It was midnight where we were, and uh, neither of us was up to getting on that call at that hour, so. Well, yes. welcome, welcome, Mabel, welcome, Ayush, welcome, Simon. Um, so, like I said, this is the Evolution Working Group, and um, let's just get started then. So, the things that we left to work on the last time were uh, work on a change requests met metrics model and a proposed a metrics model for code complexity. There is, seems to be some so I believe when we were discussing code complexity, I'm trying to bring my memory back here. Um, yeah, I think I also suggested we do the uh, commit entropy. So I would, yeah, I don't know. okay. Because when on the Asia Pacific group, there was also they I forget they wanted to change code complexity to really better understand. Um, it wasn't really code complexity they were after. It was more is the code robust and good? So they, th I think they were looking more for process oriented proxy metrics that, and so code complexity, I don't think is actually what the per people who proposed this metrics model were thinking of specifically, actually, after having that meeting, after this meeting two weeks ago. Okay. So we may just like table this for now and come back to it. And mm -hmm. Armstrong, you were proposing um what was the metrics model the uh, commit entropy i think we have uh, let me just i think somebody you see like this github thing here tool the author tried to introduce it in a way but there is much uh, robust way of doing the start the normalized uh, entropy so is, the, uh, is this um are you recommending this package as a place to look or not? Well, it's something that is a good start. Okay. A, okay. That, yeah. 
but it you know we we have to adapt things based on our reality and how we could uh, inform other people consuming our metrics because the entire thing it's we are trying to measure each commit the significance of that commit against the code base and the prevalence of that uh, commit on the changes so it's actually a process on that commit rather than talking about the uh, the complexity as a measure itself we look at the process of getting that uh, end Yeah, that's very Wikipedia-like. Oops. Looks like that site may no longer exist. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if they have the link wrong or... I'm trying to look for some papers that... No, oh, yeah, whatever blog post they wrote, this is from seven years ago. Yeah, yeah, I mean, people have been, there are a couple of things. The thing is, people don't really get into into applying this uh, concretely in project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because sometimes... Hi, Nicole. Welcome Hello. The Evolution Working Group. Okay. Oh, you're muted, Nicole, so I can't hear what you're saying. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi. Uh, we were just looking at co commit entropy as a potential metric or metric model, and Armstrong has referred us to this repository where they did do an implementation of it um, seven years ago, it looks like. Maybe six years ago, they updated the setup. Um, so, so the blog post is not available, but you're su suggesting this is maybe a place to start, Armstrong? Yeah, I know there are a couple of uh, academic papers that really propose these things and companies, I know companies like Ubisoft, uh, mostly they are not uh, open sourced, but okay. some of their tools are, they are really using this code entropy. It's a robust way of looking at the code base per contributors uh, activity, because you really try to look the process of getting that commit and how prevalent that a particular commit is against the entire code base. Yeah, if I'm so if I'm reading the definition here correctly, um, essentially the entropy is greater. Essentially, the the rate of change is greater if there's more files affected. Um, so the entropy is higher. So if I've got a commit that affects twelve files, that is more entropic than a commit that affects one file in this in this application would you apply it differently would we be interested in how much of each file has changed in a commit yeah and this also can help to predict you know like the the the, the beginning of the SZ as assume is the more changes to a file the more proneness to error yes yeah so they, they try to have the same kind of approach because these are the kind of things that practitioners are facing in the industry sometimes people you know just get along touching things they even forget what they did at the end they, they introduce an error where things were working well mm -hmm. so yeah but uh, bringing it down to this kind of measurable uh, quantity like entropy you really now to see how dangerous a commit could be or how good a commit could really be against. And then one thing that we were, I was also thinking it's trying to propose a kind of uh, predictive model before you make a pull request, something like your editor or your IDEs on things like that can warn you that this commit based on historical fact is a dangerous commit. Don't push it. Okay. Yeah, those kind so, of things. Yeah. Let so me try to get some of this down in a Google Doc. Um, would you propose, this seems like a metrics model because it seems like it would use lines of code. Yeah, I was thinking like how it is different from lines of code. 
Well, line of code is just telling you the number Mark. of lines of code that we add, deleted, or, or modified. Or files changed. Yeah. But now it, it doesn't really tell you about the the process of getting that uh, and how much. Uh, because line of code is like an output of a process, right? Okay. Yeah. So this, this matters. So this is a measure of how much code is affected by each commit. Yeah. Is this a model or? Matrix? No, no. Entropy is it, the this concept comes from the Shannon uh, law of entropy of information. So, theory. so should it, so here's, here's this is what's puzzling through my head right now. In I would say I would let me put it this way in what I would call classic software engineering or open source before GitHub commits and commit entropy made a ton of sense as a measure of change. I wonder if in the in the age of pull requests, which can contain many commits, if if pull request entropy is a, a similar measure that we might want to calculate. And if hmm. we might conceptualize what entropy is using this, the pull request as the highest factor instead of the commit. Um, because a pull request can include a hundred commits. Yeah. Um, and that's, but I don't want to, I wouldn't say commit entropy is unuseful. I would, I would say like when I'm looking at, like when I'm evaluating the risk of accepting a change, it's almost always at the pull request level. And I'm almost always looking at multiple files and there's usually maybe I'd say minimally two or three commits and sometimes 50 commits that are part of that one pull request. Um, so would we, like if we're thinking in terms of a entropy metrics model, more broadly construed, then I might want to take a look at, you know, reflecting back again on how, how entropy is defined over here. I think I'll um, also send you this paper to look. Most of the papers, are, okay. The thing is that, Shonda, when you want to measure things like in the code base, we want to go at a lower level of granularity. Pull request, okay. as we know, yeah, it's like an ab abstract quantity of this individual commit. They don't live on their own without the commit. Some commits are dangerous, some are good, some have more in, like touching, bringing so many changes. Okay. Yeah. So we want to measure this individual unit, these component blocks to see how that pull. Re so the pull request is describing and it's also based on the workflow. Remember in the wall of Garrett and GitLab, we are now talking about change requests, no longer pull request. Right. I yeah, mean, so change. Yeah. Change. So, so yeah, Garrett has a different model, yeah. which, um, Ildico explained to us at one point and it is more, it's more commit focused. But usually they're merging a collection of commits from a branch, mm -hmm. yeah. which to me is conceptually the same thing as a merge request on GitLab or a pull request on GitHub. Um, yeah, but because I, and so, I, not, so yeah. I, I guess you're right. If we if we looked at how much code is affected by each commit, then we would have all the granularity, but we wouldn't have the we wouldn't have the principal unit of work. So. I would, so I would think if, um, so if it's a met, I would say that we, I don't know, it sounds like we want the metrics model at the commit entropy. We want a metric for commit entropy. Um, and I think we can reverse engineer that from this link that you've provided. But then the next question is, do we also want a, mo a metric related to, um, sort of like I, I guess I could think of a metric for for pull request entropy as well and mm -hmm. together those two would be the foundation for an overall project entropy metric model mm -hmm. Presu presumably you would be looking at entropy over some time period so how much 
of the code is changed in a particular time period, right? Yeah. So I don't know, should we begin by defining a commit entropy metric first? Yeah, we can always do that. I mean, then we have yeah. a, a, a framework to work and see how we could always uh, update things based on certain, we can always update our belief. All right. So there's, um, I have to find the, I need a new template. Yeah. If I'm understanding correctly, is it like we are first defining commit entropy, uh, pull request entropy, and then from those we are creating a model as a project entropy? I th yeah, as I kind of like walk it back, based on what Armstrong is saying, I think defining commit entropy is a useful metric. Okay. It definitely fits in the evolution working group. And then, and I, so, I think it's a metric and not a metric model, although it could, because we're going to be doing calculations that are different than yeah. the calculations we do for lines of code changed and number of files affected and commits at their rawest, lowest level. So I think it's more of a metric than a metric model. Yeah. There is one blog post. Let me try to look for it because I'm, uh, uh, the other papers that I I have here, I, I mean, it might be all of us cannot access it since some of them are in the IEEE uh, Explore. They are not really free. I, I'm not sure everyone can. I don't know. I'm just assuming. But I'll look some blog post, blog post and share it with us to see how... Uh, some people have been trying to implement it in their real uh, situation. And even this Ubisoft is one of the leading game, co game companies in the world. It's in Montreal. They are and also, they, they use code entropy? Yeah. And I think I've forgotten. I'm sure Microsoft, um, uh, the time I did some research with them, we were proposing a kind of this uh, CIFA. But I'm, I'm not sure it's, it, it, it went through a certain level of maturity. This thing that when you start writing your code, even before you make a final pull request, it really warns you on how dangerous or how successful this kind of uh, thing could be. So you really, before even waiting for, for reviewers to give you certain feedback, you, see, you try to measure against the code base what is, has been accepted already. You try to see it, and all of them were, were building from the entropy perspective. Yeah, I mean, for, yeah. So if you're like, you can look at the commits. Oops. Uh, where did I keep this thing? Mm, okay, let me see this. So for, yeah, for. So the question is, how much code is affected by each commit? All right. I mean, is that the basic? That's the basic question, Armstrong. If I'm if I'm interpreting what you've said correctly. Uh, sorry, copy again, Sean. How saying? much? So if I, I moved us to the metric template because this is okay. more like a metric. And so the first thing is the question. And I think the question is how much code is affected by each commit? Um, yeah. So, so if this is the code, that a question that how much code is affected by each commit is then how it is different from the number of lines or number of codes changed in a commit? The number of line is this is complexity matrix is telling most is mostly working with this cyclosomatic complexity where you are now calculating. Uh, well, that's the number of lines on a in a program. I think yeah. is what you're yeah, describing. Yeah. The number we have lines of code in a commit and it, as a metric. 
Yeah, that's how I'm I, like, I, so I the, understand the importance of entropy, but I'm not sure this is the right question. Like if, if, if this is the question, I feel that we have already addressed this question in the number of uh, the previous metric we released on the code. So what the previous metric doesn't provide us is a, a context for lines of code changed. So okay. we're getting commits and we're getting lines of code changed. What's important in this metric and missing from lines of code, I think, is in a, across the project, how many files are affected by each commit. Oh, and okay. then within each file, correct me if I'm extending this to incorrectly, Armstrong. With, do I, I would think I would want to know then within each file how much, how many lines of code are changed and how many lines of code are present. Mm -hmm. before and after wouldn't I yeah because the, the, certainly I mean if I'm just I mean the course measure would just be to look at the number of files affected by a commit but oftentimes I would say and also and oftentimes though it may be a small number of files but if you're refactoring most of the code then maybe that is also a change we want to surface and I don't know if we want yeah. that to be a part of the same metric it feels like it would be like maybe we would be getting too granular if we separated them into different metrics. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Armstrong? Yeah, because uh, like what Vern was saying, just imagine 10 people are making a change and all yeah. the commits are touching a particular file. Just mm -hmm. by observing from this perspective, what would be your take on that? Let's say we have... Uh, uh, I'd certainly immediately, files. I'd certainly suspect I would have merge commit, merge problems. Yeah. Then uh, now if everybody's <laughs> commit is touching inside the 10 files, everybody's commit is touching some two particular files in that commit. And over the period of two weeks, all the commits are touching those two files. That already tell the risky nature of that file. But the line of code doesn't really look into that. Okay. Now I got it. Yeah. So you help me. I mean, I'll put a link to this document. I realize I did not do that, and so you have no way to actually edit it. I'm like, why isn't anyone else editing? I'm like, well, I haven't shared it. So there you go. Um, I shared the link now. And uh, so, so maybe yeah, share the link. I'll rewrite the question. Maybe it's this. Yeah. Like, how yeah. much code is affecting a particular piece of software or a particular file or something like along that line? The way Armstrong has described now, now I can see the like its impact yeah. and the. I don't know if there's a question. Oh, you can noodle on that. Armstrong, I don't know if, if you want to take a shot at describing it or maybe objectives, we can talk through it together. Okay, let me um, just trying to feel, okay. You and you can put like any references you have. You can, okay. Yeah. You can put okay. them down here. Okay. I'm usually able to find just about anything. Code is affected. Code is affected for each. And M. Armstrong, can you help us with this? Okay. Um, let me go. Let's 
objectives. Okay. I'll work on this. Is there a specific formula for calculating entropy or it's just a percentage change in... No, there is a entropy? formula. Yeah. There, there is a formula. Let me... Uh, there was... Uh, they had a link to Shannon Entropy on Wikipedia. Yeah. Which okay. immediately made my eyes gloss over. Um, Wait, let me share this link with us here. So what I think this math is effectively saying is um acting pulses in the complexity of curve changes. Okay, so they're calling entropy. Uh, I'm going to get rid of my research gate account because I was tired of it. Let's find it out. I guess not. You know this paper is published, Armstrong. Yeah, I see. TXZ paper is two thousand and nine. Oh, two thousand nine. Okay. Yeah, but you know, Hassan is the well. I'm, it may not play a role, but just to give his credibility, he's yeah. the number one in software engineering in the world. A number one ranked scholar. Yeah. Okay. 
it may not mean anything. It's just to say, I mean. Well, yeah, that certainly brings credibility. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> say. Of course, that immediately uh, leads Sean, me over here. Click, yeah. click the DUI link and it'll open the page. Uh, in the in the research gate, click the oh, DUI yeah. link, link. Yep. Yep. I know what you're talking about. This yep. one here. Yep. Click this and it'll open that. Now you can get the PDF. I have okay. the P. I was able to download oh. the PDF. Okay. okay. Um, that what? Well, yeah, I was. That was. I'd gotten that, but I guess you're not seeing it because uh, my screen's too big to share with everybody. If people are on okay. laptops, it's overwhelming. Um, so I could share that, but why don't I just um, why don't I just put it up in? I'll give you a link to it in our drive. In okay. Just a second. I think on that section 5.2, he, he, he proposed that uh, the normalized form so that everything goes to 100%. So when you visualize over time now, you, you could e easily see the changes over time and measure it against like productivity or whatever you're measuring, to pay 100%. So no, 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 no particular file structure could be so go like extremely high and some other very low because of their prevalence but when they normalize they really have a standardized form all right and now have that available at this link if you want to scan the PDF Okay. Um, oops, this template. Come back to the metric. Yeah. Just for now. I know we can't keep footnotes because it will make Kevin insane, but I mean, publishing the website gets really more difficult, but at least for now, we can provide those links for our own reference and then put them in. Yep, that's useful. Thanks, Manad. The footnote I put at the very top, uh, number one, that's the link to the PDF, just so we have a, a common reference. Um, file code change model he also has in here. So he is defining um, a file code, so it's files and code. Always feels better before the period to me. I should have done that as a change. Um, yeah, they talk about in this paper the possibility of um, evaluating both lines. 
they have they describe a basic code change model and an extended code change model and the extended one is the one that looks at the file level details <clears throat> i mean i mean, i'll just come back to beat the dead horse that this paper was written before github and pull requests merge requests change requests became primary unit of how people make changes to codes so I do, I do think the commit change is certainly the most granular and it's certainly useful. I also think we, we also have some good research knowing that shows us that the larger a pull request is, the more time it takes to review and process, um, which is a similar kind of finding. Do, do we want to continue to work on this right now or do we want to? Um, I mean, I'm we can sure, walk offline and then we give room for other uh, things on our plate. Okay. Yeah. So if you want, I can want you to this is the directory. So if you run across additional articles, Armstrong, um, yeah. that link uh, provides the code change. I can test it. It works. <clears throat> so there's definitely one tool that implements this which is that tool that you referred to us, referred us to. So that's one. And I, I mean, this, this particular metric would be pretty easy to put into Augur because we already have the raw data. Okay. Um, yeah, but like uh, my question, one question I have is, do we need to have that uh, calculation here defined somewhere in the metric? Yeah, I mean, we probably should, but I'd like yeah. to define it in plainer language than the, mm. the, the set arithmetic that's expressed in the paper yep. um, and the Wikipedia article. Like, I think it needs to be more approachable than forcing mm -hmm. people to recall their set, their set arithmetic or their set math. Okay. Because that's pretty, it's pretty high end complex yeah. stuff. <clears throat> and I think we have to have the metric use. I mean, we can we reference these papers and they can see the fancy math that they yeah. want to, but I think we need to explain it in clear language. Yeah, maybe we have a note somewhere that there is an entire calculation for which you can refer some of these papers. Or... Yeah, certainly the this paper that Armstrong identified is. Yep. It's it seems to be the canonical definition of commit entropy, and I suspect if I looked at papers that cite it, I would find current state of the art or thinking on this. So that this to me is a little bit like a literature review. <laughs> Can you help with that, Armstrong? Well, which one? So, so just to assemble any other relevant articles. Yeah. That um, um, that we could use to sort of weave our way through. Okay. 
um, weave our way through the process of determining how we want to express this metric. I know in my case, I'd probably want to read at least this paper and I'd pro probably search for a few more on my own, but if you have ones that you recommend, then let's use those. Okay. So I'll give you the action. Um, Okay, um, let's see. We have about seven minutes left. I don't feel like I can make any more contribution to this yep. before looking over some of the prior work on it. Getting my head, I mean, I have, a, I have a general conceptualization of what it means, but when it comes to how we might want to visualize that and what an implementation might look like, like, okay, so theoretically, I mean, I think an implementation would go from get log to file change count per commit to lines of code changed per file, per commit. Like, I think conceptually, that's what we'd be doing. Right, Armstrong? Does yeah. that look right to you? At least like, the, you know, we go through the Git log, we look at, you know, files changed, files change, or if I guess it was right, singular file change count per commit. That lets us know something. Lines of code change per file per commit from there. <clears throat> and at some level, this appears to me to need to be measured against um, some proportion of total files. Yeah, because in a project. We, yeah, you measuring against the code base. So the code base in this context could be like the for the project or the particular yeah. Because that's where you want to see the impact. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's just the stepping stone of the SZ algorithm and many others that have been doing using it. Yeah. It's just that they, yeah, they play for pay more attention to the SZ without really knowing at that lower level of granularity, the various stages of obtaining the result. Yeah, Sean, I think that <clears throat> this is Nicole. That makes a lot of sense. It provides context um, uh, for measurement. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, what would I say? What would be some words? Out? So, I would want to have the do I need the lines of code before and after a change and the file count before and after a change to account to, to calculate these percentages, do you think? Trying to know how to put the words in here. I think you might. Um, yeah, because you're you're measuring before and then after that change went in or was committed. Right. And so, Armstrong, do you know if these algorithms treat new lines of code differently than change lines of code? Uh, In other words, I, if I add a function, sure. is that different? I'm not sure about that. Let me see one paper here that one works that actually implemented it in a different way. They are using a similar kind of idea. They just, you know, they adding this context and making that proportion. That's one of the things that stands out. You know, the common the common misleading uh, thing with uh, figures is that if somebody tells you that 
90% of the commits are, let's say, harmful. Without knowing the population that they are talking about, that could be so misleading uh, statistic to present to somebody. Because the 90% the may come from the fact that you had only, let's say, uh, 500 files in your whole repository. Then somebody with 50,000, you see, somebody yeah. like, yeah, then that's a whole lot of misinformation at that point. Does this sentence seem reasonable? The percentage of change is critical for providing context within which we can evaluate entropy and from an entropy measurement discern the risk level associated okay. with a commit. Yeah. Okay. And I think maybe like a to do is um, to try to, I think we do have to get this to some kind of some sort of formula representation so that it can be implemented consistently in tools. Some form, some to formula in the I would also suggest like listening and uh, how this is evolving. Once we are done with it, we might, uh, it's better to move this metric to the risk rather than in evolution. Because it's more of a measurement of a riskiness <coughs> of a particular change or code commit mm -hmm. that is helping us to assess. I, uh, I think I see what uh, you I, I, bit. I conceptually agree with you, but I think that the folks who are in the evolution group are the ones who are actually like Armstrong. Yeah, I, and I like that's where one. I say once we finalize it, then we can yeah. move it to the risk. I mean, we're, yeah, I suppose where it lives, it doesn't really yeah. matter that much. Yeah. Um, I mean, with this, this gets back to our, our knowledge base and yeah. how we organize information because this is one that could certainly be cross-listed in, in both working groups. And I think yeah. as we create more metric, you know, we're, we're at the point with metrics development where yep. these, this is a really useful metric that we haven't conceptualized before, but in order to make it useful. Um, and I, I'm just thinking, I'm thinking about both where it belongs from the kind of work done in a working group and also yeah. where, where it would be, where I would look for it as a newcomer to the community. So if I was looking for something about commits, I might not initially conceptualize it as a risk. I mm -hmm. might just conceptualize it as a commit entropy. So I'm browsing, I'm, I don't know, it's like I'm, I don't have a strong opinion. I'm just sort yep. of speaking my thoughts out loud about what, what you made me think of when you suggested deploying it in the risk working group which was like how criticality entropy is helping you to assess the criticality of a particular commit in regards to the entire code base, which is a kind of a risk assessment you are looking at. This is what made me think along those lines. Is it criticality? Is that, I don't know how you met, I don't have a, I'm getting really super um, in retentive now, but so, criticality so for example, is something I don't have a definition so, for. The so <laughs> first example on Armstrong gave is like, if 30 people are committing a code and everyone is changing a one particular file, which is uh, helping me to assess the riskiness of that, all these commits in regards to that one file or the importance of that one file. Say that again, Ron. So uh, what I'm saying is like, if you, if you look at the first example, the Armstrong provided is like if 30 people or 10 people or 20 people are committing a code and they are all are changing one particular line and we want a, uh, one particular file. So we want to assess the riskiness of the, that code or uh, commit. Yeah. So I, I would say I could definitely see where I would have my eyebrows raised if I had a lot of people making commits on the same file. Yep. Right. Like that makes me nervous especially when it comes, like when I, I mean, I, it, you know, it, we're out of time. And so yep. it's been great. Thanks everybody. But when I'm like merging a pull request from someone else on Augur, for example, and it affects other code, you know, a lot of different pieces of code that other people have edited, it takes, it takes, and it's perhaps if two people have touched that file in a time period, which is why I'm trying to just merge pull requests more 
very quickly right now. So I don't have that problem, but I definitely, you know, when I have occasion where two people have changed a file in adjacent pull requests, where making sense of what versions of everything is actually going to run, it becomes a very, uh, I try to I try to catch it before I run tests, you know, obvious logic errors with the review process, but this, this would be a really good measure that would tell me like if, yep. if, 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 yeah, if a lot of code or a lot of files are changing regularly, I would say I would characterize the entropy as high and the, the risk of a project is higher, so to speak. So, all right. That I think that was a really good discussion. Thanks for bringing yep. that, Armstrong. I, I think I look forward to working on this next time. This, this okay. feels like a very useful metric to me. Yeah, <clears throat> I think I posted the book, the blog post that I was uh, the methods and about. tools. Yeah, I put that in the references there as okay. well. That's no, the not guy. the one on the GitHub tool. Just of just now. Methodsandtools.com. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, yeah. yep. I, I did get that in the Google Doc before I closed the share. Okay, no problem. Sorry. That's good to go. Okay. And all right. I will see everybody okay. in two weeks. Okay. Thank you, yeah. Sean. Thank you, right. everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. -bye. Bye.